Hello friends, welcome to Science Learning Gateway. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to learn how to find the valency of any of the element in just a minute. So in this tutorial, I will teach you how you can find the valency of any of the element through simple trick. Okay, we'll use a simple trick by which we can find the valency of any of the element. I have already uploaded the videos related to the names, symbols and atomic number of the elements and I've also uploaded one of the video in which you can find the find the atomic mass of any of the element by using a simple trick. So you can check those videos in the playlist of uh, basic concepts of chemistry in my channel. If you want to score good marks in chemistry, your knowledge uh, in the elements atomic number mass number and valency sh valency should be good so that you can score very good marks in chemistry and i will help you out to score good marks in chemistry and i think it will be interesting for you all also to learn chemistry with me so let's start guys before starting guys i have a small request from you all if you're really liking my tutorial my channel and my video then please like share and subscribe my channel and if it is helpful for you share it with your friends also and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get the latest notification whenever i will be uploading a new video you'll get the notification for that so please click on the bell icon so that you'll up, you'll get the notification for that so let's start with our topic that is valency so what is valency simple definition of valency is valency is the combining capacity of an element if question will come in your exam that what is valency you can write this definition valency is the combining capacity of an element okay you can also write this definition the second one the number of electrons gained lost or shared as to make the outermost shell stable that is octet configuration give us directly the combining capacity of the element that is valency means Whenever we whenever we'll write the electronic configuration of any of the element, sometimes what happens the electrons uh, the elements will gain electron. They want to gain electron, and some of the elements want to lose electron, and some of the elements share electron in order to get stable electronic configuration. What is the stable electronic configuration for any of the element? It can be duplet or it can be octet, but duplet is only in case of your uh, helium. Other elements will follow the octet rule means they should have eight electron in the outermost cell. So in order to get eight electron in the outermost cell elements what they used to do they used to gain electron they used to lose electron or they can share electrons also. So that, that will give us the valency how many electrons are gained by an, and by an element how many electrons are lost by the element and how many electrons are shared by the element that will give us the valency. If we know the atomic number of any element we can easily calculate the valency of the element. For example if we take sodium okay if we take sodium the symbol of sodium is Na. Atomic number of sodium is 11 okay. As you can see in this diagram, this is the electron distribution diagram of sodium. In the center, we have the nucleus. This one is our nucleus. The center of any of the atom, nucleus is present. And in the nucleus, inside the nucleus, what are the subatomic particles present? Protons and neutrons. As you all know that atom is composed of three fundamental particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. So inside the nucleus, protons and neutrons are present. And around the nucleus, in the shells or the orbits, electrons will revolve. These are the dot-like structure you can see in these orbits or the shells are the electrons. So electrons will revolve around the nucleus. And protons and neutrons are together known as nucleons. This is also one of the most important questions. What are nucleons? Nucleons. then what you will write protons and neutrons present in the nucleus are known as nucleons okay that is a simple answer for that one and around the nucleus shells are present these one two three shells you can see in this diagram the first shell which is close to the nucleus is called the k shell the second shell is called the l shell capital K, capital L and the third shell, the outermost shell is called the M shell. So in this sodium atom we have three shells but in other elements more shells can be present like M, N, O, P shells can also be present. So but in this sodium atom we have only three shells K, L and M. In the center nucleus is present. The first shell which is close to the nucleus is called the K shell. The second shell which is close to, close to the nucleus is the L shell and the third shell which is close to the nucleus is called the M shell. In in K shell only 8 electrons can be present. Suppose we want to calculate the number of electrons in the shell. So we will use the formula 2n square. It was given by the scientist Neil Bohr. 
in the Neal's atomic in the Bohr's atomic model. This is the formula by which you can calculate the number of electrons being present present in any of the cell. For K, if we take the example of in suppose we want to calculate the number of electrons in K shell. For K shell, we'll take n is equals to n is equal to one. If we will apply this formula, then what we will write two into one square. The value will be only two means in k shell how many electrons can be present only two electrons for example in the in your school bench is, is bench is there in the classroom in one bench only two students can sit okay not more than that like that only in k shell only two electrons can be present not more than that if the third electron will come the k shell can cannot accommodate that electron it will feel uncomfortable like in like in that bench if the third student if your friend third friend comes and sit in that bench you don't feel comfortable right you don't get place to sit like that only in k shell only two electrons can be present not more than that next one for L shell will take for L shell n is equal to 2 because it is the second cell so we'll take L is equal to n is equal to 2 again we'll use the formula 2 n square 2 into 2 square how much we will get 2 square is 4 4 into 2 is 8 means total number of electrons which can be present in L shell is 8 in L shell 8 electrons can be present okay like that we can calculate for M shell also for M shell the value of n is equal to 3. Again, we'll use the formula 2n square. 2 into 3 square. In place of n, we'll put 3. How much we will get? 3 3 is a 9. 2 into 9. How much you will get? 18. Okay. So, in m shell, how many electrons can be present? 8, 18 electrons. So, like this, you can calculate the number of electrons in any of the cell. In K shell, always 2 electrons will be present. In L shell, always 8 electrons will be present. And in M shell, always 18 electrons will be present. Not more than that. This was the concept about the cell. Next, I will tell you. Next, uh, I will tell you in case of sodium atom. Suppose the electronic configuration of sodium is sorry atomic number of sodium is 11 now we want to write the electronic configuration in terms of k l and m shell because we know that in sodium only three shells are present okay now we'll calculate the electronic configuration in k shell how many electrons can be present two electrons in l shell how many electrons can be present eight electron eight plus two is ten but atomic number of sodium is 11 atomic number is equal to number of protons or number of electrons so this 11 is the number of electrons now we'll fill the number of electrons in these shells so eight plus two is ten only one electron is left eleven minus ten one electron that one electron will go into the m shell so all together in sodium three shells are present in the k shell two electrons are present you can see in this diagram in the l shell eight electrons can be accommodated and in the last shell that the, that is the last shell that is the m shell only one electron can be present and one more thing i want to tell in this one is that the last or the outermost shell is called the valence shell okay the outermost shell of any of the atom is called the valence shell is called the valence shell and the electrons which are present in the valence shell or the outermost shell is called are called valence electrons. This you should remember. Okay, this is a very important concept. The outermost shell of an of an atom is called the valence shell, and the electrons which are present in the outermost shell are called valence electrons. Okay, and this valence electrons are very important and they take part in a chemical reaction. They will give they will give us the valency also. For example, in sodium one electron is present in the outermost shell so what sodium will do sodium will donate this electron sodium will lose this electron in order to get get stable electronic configuration that is octet electronic configuration this sodium also want that in its outermost shell eight electrons should be present if one electron it will give to somebody else means it will if it will lose one electron then it will get get eight electron in the outermost shell so sodium will become stable so so in this case, sodium is giving one electron, it is losing one electron. So the valency of sodium in this case will be 1. So what is the valency of sodium? Sodium of val valency of sodium is 1. As this sodium, now we'll come to the concept of positive negative valency. You know that valency are of two types, positive and negative. For example, if the atom will lose electron, then it will have positive valency. In this case, sodium is losing one electron, so we'll put 
positive valency in this case you can understand like this that suppose you have five chocolates with you if you have given those five chocolates to your friend that you are bigger then you are bigger than your friend that you have five chocolates and but your friend is not having any chocolate so what you are bigger like that only sodium is bigger means it it will it will give one electron to anybody else and it will gain a positive charge okay you have to remember that sodium is bigger than any other element means it is it has more power than the other element that's why it is having a valency of positive suppose some any element will gain electron they will take electron then they will have a negative valency in case of chlorine chlorine wants to gain one electron because it is having seven electron in the outermost shell so it will gain one electron so it will have minus one valency so this was all, all what about the concept of cell and valency next one one of the question generally asked in the exam that why noble gases have zero valency okay the noble gases they are present in which group they are present in group number 18 okay noble gases are present in group number 18 sorry by mistake i have written over there 17 noble gases are present in group number 18 uh like examples of noble gases or the inert gases are helium neon argon krypton these all are noble gases so why they have zero valency because they have out, they have completely filled outer motion suppose you take the example of helium atomic number of helium is 2 it will have two electron in the outer motion so it is forming a duplet only exception is helium it is forming it will have two electron in the other in the its outer motion other elements will have eight electron in the outer motion for example in case of neon it is having 10 atomic number electronic configuration 28 argon 18 atomic number electronic configuration 28 you can see 8 8 electrons are there in the outer motion so they will have a completely filled outer motion they are stable they don't want to gain lose or share electron with any other element so they will have zero valency inert why their name is inert because they are very unreactive they don't want to react with another an other element so they don't want to form a bond with other elements okay they don't want to participate in any of the chemical reaction they don't want to form any compound or molecule because they are stable in their own state because they are having a octet configuration they they have completely filled out a more shell so they have zero valency so i hope you all have understood what concept i have given to you next now let's move to our next slide in which we'll discuss about the valency first we'll discuss about the valency of first 10 elements now i will tell you how you will calculate the valency so our first 10 elements are from hydrogen to neon atomic number you can uh, see from 1 to 10 you can learn the atomic number elements and uh, the symbol in my in my videos which i have uploaded in the playlist of basic concepts of of chemistry please go through this video if you are new to the channel okay for example hydrogen is having atomic number 1 electronic configuration 1 like this helium is having atomic number 2 so two electron it has in its atom electronic configuration be two lithium is having atomic number 3 how we will write the electronic configuration in the k shell two electron and one electron which is left will go into the l shell two one beryllium four electronic configuration two two because k shell two electron and next two electron will go into the l shell like this you can write the electronic configuration of any of the element for example in neon two electron in the k shell and the next eight electron will go into the m shell now i will tell you how you will calculate the valency if you know the atomic number you can easily calculate the valency valency means the electrons which are present in the outermost shell the electrons which will be present in the outermost shell will give you the valency for example in hydrogen one electron is present in the outermost shell valency is 1 in helium two electrons are present in the outermost shell valency is 2 in lithium one electron is present in the outermost shell so the valency of lithium will be 1 you can see two shells we have k and l shell l is the outermost shell over there so the valency of lithium will be 1 in beryllium in the outermost shell how many electrons are present two electrons so the va valency of beryllium will be 2 in boron how many electrons are present in the outermost shell 3 so the valency of boron is 3 in carbon how many electrons are present in the outermost shell 4 so the valency of carbon will be 4 till here no problem whatever will be the number of electrons outermost electron that will be the valency means if the number of outermost electron or the valence electron is less than equal to 4 then the valency will be same as the number of electron from 1 to 4 if the number of valence electron is from 1 to 4 then the valency will be same but if the number of valence electron is greater than or equal to 5 then you have to use one formula and what is that formula you have to subtract that number from 8 whatever will be the number of valence electron you have to subtract it with 8 this is the only concept you have to remember if the number of valence electron is still 4 if 
n if n is the number of valence electron if n is less than equal to 4 then the number of valence then the valency will be same as the number of valence electron but if the if the number of valence electron is greater than or equal to 5 then you have to use this formula what you have to do you have to subtract subtract the number of valence electron with 8 now we'll discuss this suppose in case of nitrogen we have 5 electron in the outermost shell that is valence electrons number is 5 so which formula we'll use 8 minus n means n over here we have 5 so 8 minus 5 is 3 so the valency of nitrogen is 3 like that for oxygen you can do for oxygen, we'll use again that formula 8 minus 6. How much you will get? 2. So the valency of oxygen is 2. For fluorine also, 8 minus 7. How many, how many electron, how, how much you will get the valency? 1. So the valency of fluorine is 1. For neon, we have 8 electron in the outermost shell. 8 minus 8 is 0. 8 is a noble gas. So I have told you that noble gases have 0 valency. So valency of neon will be 0. I hope you all have understood the concept how you have to find the valency. But for that, you should know the atomic number. If you know the atomic number, you can easily calculate the valency of any of the elements. Okay, so what concept you have to remember? If the number of valence electron is less than or equal to 4, then the valency will be same as the number of valence electron till 4. But if number of valence electron, valence electron means outermost electron is greater than or equal to 5, then you have to subtract that number of valence electron with 8. For, for example, in case of nitrogen, we have 5 electron in the outermost shell. We have subtracted this 5 with 8. We have got 3. Like this, you can calculate the valency of other elements also. Now, let's move to our next 10 elements. Next 10 element means from sodium to calcium, atomic number 11 to 20. In case of sodium, electronic configuration is 281. One electron in the outermost shell. So, that will be our valency. Valency is 1. In magnesium, 2 electron in the outermost shell. Valency is 2. In aluminum, in case of aluminium, 3 electrons in the outermost shell. Valency is 3. In case of silicon, 4 is the outermost electron. The valency is 4. But now, now next come to phosphorus. In case of phosphorus, the electronic configuration is 285. In the outermost shell, how many electrons are present? 5. Next, will which formula will use? 8 minus n, where n is equal to number of valence electron. 8 minus 5 will give you 3 that is 3 is your valency in case of phosphorus okay like that you can calculate for sulfur 6 electron on the outermost shell 8 minus 6 2 well 2 then 2 will be the valency of sulfur chlorine 7 electron on the outermost shell 8 minus 7 1 you will get 1 will be the valency of chlorine you have seen many times that chlorine is chlorine is written in the form of like this cl minus in case of argon, 288, it is a noble gas. So, its valency will be 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. In case of potassium, we have the electronic configuration 2881. 1 electron in the outermost shell. So, its valency is 1. Again, in case of calcium, we have the electronic configuration 2882. 2 electron in the outermost shell. So, its valency is 2. But you have seen that in case of potassium and calcium, we have written the electronic configuration like this. That in K shell 2 electron, L shell 8 electrons, M shell 8 electrons, and n l shell one electron we can put this one in n shell also but we will not put this one electron in n m shell because a shell cannot accommodate more than eight electrons always the shell will accommodate eight electrons not more than that so after eight you have to put the extra electron in the next shell like in calcium also in k shell two electron l shell eight electron m shell again eight electron two extra electron we have then that two electron will put in the next shell so the valency it will be two Okay, so this was what about valency, which formula you have to use, if the num only you have to remember the concept of outermost electron, outermost electron means valence electron, if the number of valence electron is n is equal to less than equal to 4, then the valency will be equal to valence electron, suppose it is 1, 2, 3 or 4, then the valency will be same, 1, 2, 3, 4, but if the number of valence electron is greater than equal to 5, then the valency will be, then you have to calculate the valency using the formula 8 minus n 8 minus 5 that is 3 like this you can calculate the valency of any of the element in just a minute but for that 
that you have to remember the, the atomic number without atomic number we cannot calculate the valency and if we know the valency we can easily write the formula of the compounds also in my next tutorial i will teach you how to write the formula of the compounds okay so that you can score very good marks in chemistry and it will be interesting for you by using this these simple tricks you can easily learn the concepts of the chemistry so this was all about that if you have any doubt you can comment in the comment section i will clear your doubt thank you for watching my channel science learning gateway if this tutorial is helpful for you then share it with your friends also and please like share and subscribe my channel to get more videos like this so that i can help you out in understanding the concepts of chemistry and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified whenever i will be uploading a new video you can also connect with me through the facebook link which i will provide in the description box you can connect with me through facebook also and if you have any doubt please comment in the comment section i will clear the doubt the doubt and in the i button i will be providing you the link of the previous videos related to chemistry thank you for watching my channel